Forecasters in the United States are warning of a potentially catastrophic tidal surge on the Gulf Coast as a result of Hurricane Ida. The hurricane, which has now been downgraded to a tropical storm, swept ashore from the Gulf of Mexico as a Category 4 storm. It made landfall in the state of Louisiana before moving inland over Mississippi. The entire city of New Orleans was left without power, and it could be weeks before it's restored in many places. Now that the height of the storm has passed, a clearer picture is emerging of the devastation Hurricane Ida left behind. It was crazy. It was scary. Yeah. It was really, really windy. And a lot of trees had fell. Yeah. And power lines. They had sparks of power lines everywhere. It was horrible, man. I was in the middle of it, in the middle of the eye, so it wasn't real good at all. On the same day, 16 years ago, Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. As a Category 4 storm, Ida lashed across Louisiana and Mississippi with ferocious winds that knocked out power for hundreds of thousands of people. My roof gone, I lost all my clothes, my furniture, my appliance, everything. Right now, I got nothing. For those who can't afford to move to higher ground, the damage and the loss is always much worse. Rapidly rising water chased those who couldn't evacuate up to their attics, where they called and texted to be rescued. President Joe Biden has called Ida a life-threatening storm and declared Louisiana a major disaster area. Federal help is on its way. Please know that we have thousands of people out right now with high water vehicles and boats uh, who are doing search and rescue. We have dozens of helicopters up. Louisiana's governor is asking neighbors to look in on each other until more help arrives. Let's bring in Matthew Capucci here. He's a meteorologist for the Washington Post and has been tracking Ida from the beginning. Matthew, what's the damage assessment from this storm so far? I think right now we're just finally beginning to understand the scope of the damage. Keep in mind, many of these areas are completely inaccessible. There's trees in the ground, vegetation blocking paths. A lot of places near the coast are still washed out with surge that has made routes completely impassable. So I think it'll be a little while before we fully understand. But already, more than 90% of New Orleans completely without power. There are areas that are, are just in shambles right now. And not just mobile homes, well-constructed buildings have been tattered by the wind and decimated by surge. So it's a multifaceted, really a, a damage signature that we've seen. And unfortunately, it'll take a long time to start picking up the pieces, even before folks can just get back into New Orleans without having to worry about the really danger in, in their neighborhoods. There have been warnings of a possible catastrophic <clears throat> tidal surge there in the Gulf, and the uh, weather system continues to move inland. Is this storm still dangerous, Matthew? It is. The threat right now is shifting from damaging winds and surge near the coast, which was what first accompanied the storms that made landfall, to more a heavy rain threat. We're forecasting very heavy rainfall across the Mississippi Valley, Tennessee Valley, and parts of the Mid-Atlantic, too, and a chance of some tornadoes. We saw multiple tornadoes in Alabama yesterday, more likely today, Tuesday, across parts of the southeastern U.S., and then eventually Wednesday in the Mid-Atlantic region near Washington, D.C., now, the big issue, like we said, is rainfall. Soils are completely saturated. The ground can't really take much more water. And we're expecting between 10, 15, maybe even 25 centimeters of rain in some places, even in places that should only see about maybe 5, 10 in the entire month. So a waterlogged storm moving northwards. The ground can't take much more of it, and flash flooding will be likely and widespread. Well, as you mentioned, Matthew, Ida has knocked out power across uh, most of New Orleans and many other places. How is that affecting disaster relief efforts? I think that's making things kind of that much more difficult in that we're having a tough time communicating with folks in there. We're having a tough time getting information in and information out. I think that piece is key because the more the national media can see images of devastation, can see and project these pictures and these scenes as to what's going on, I think the easier it is to effort resources there and to get folks to really care about what's going on there. And unfortunately, given the communication hurdles at this point, we just haven't seen too much out of the area. The Coast Guard was busy all day yesterday surveying the damage, and we're really just starting to come into a clearer picture as to what exactly befell southeastern Louisiana. Near the coast, we're seeing uh, entire neighborhoods that were destroyed by the surge. Surge reaching two to four meters, not quite as bad as Hurricane Katrina, but near the coastline, a very significant hurdle those folks had to deal with. But uh, I think it'll be a, a really a long time before things get back to way, the way they were beforehand, and, and some places will 
likely forever be altered, but uh, those communication hurdles are a biggie. The electricity a problem too, you can't really do too much if you don't have electricity. So residents who did evacuate can't come back yet and start cleaning up because if they come back, there's no running water, there's no electricity, it's tough mm. to find gasoline. And so all these mm. people are displaced and, and can't come home. Matthew, thank you so much. That was Matthew Capucci with the Washington Post.